Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Julie's Orchids. Um, Happy New Year. This is the first uh, video for 2024. I hope everyone's holiday season was nice, stress-free, relaxing, and filled with lots of family, friends, and love and peace. Um, what are we going to do today? So about a month ago, I'm going to put a link in here. Uh, I got an epic orchid haul from my friend Lynn Brooks. Uh, and in that I explained that she's moving to Thailand um, and she's going to be opening up her own YouTube video channel back there when she gets uh, relocated to Thailand. So I purchased a lot of orchids from Lynn and in that I also was given this tray of seedlings. Um, they're a species Dendrobium discolor and in the process of her moving and getting ready to move internationally she realized that she wasn't quite keeping up with them, so she gave them to me um, to try to keep them going and not kill them. So I've had them for about a month, as I mentioned about a month ago. Uh, I put that link in for uh, the Epic Orchid Hall from Lynn Brooks Orchids. Um, these came into my collection, so I've had them in the grow space, uh, acclimating and getting used to uh, the environment that they're going to grow in. And Lynn has them potted up in styrofoam and small lecker beads um, which I'm going to take them out of that styrofoam and I'm going to put them into pumice because uh, this is a setup that I find works well for me for seedlings in my growing environment. Um, these ones were in really rough shape when I got them. Um, some of them have picked up a little bit, some of them are dead. Um, so we're going to clean out the dead ones repot up the ones that I think are going to make it and that's what we're going to do for today's video. Okay so we'll turn the camera around and we'll have a look at repotting these and now I am going to be using the smallest size pumice that I have. I use the smallest size pumice for the seedlings um, because that helps keep them a bit moister longer as they're more used to that. Uh, as I mentioned I, I'm doubtful that many if any of these are going to survive uh, I was kind of doubtful at that when I brought them back from Lynn's. They were being grown outside, um, right through the hot of the heat of things, and Lynn just couldn't keep up keeping them as moist as they needed to be um, because she's preparing to move. So we'll see what we can do to save them. And like I said, there's a good chunk of them that I believe are just beyond saving and already dead. So we'll turn the camera around and we'll get started. Okay, so we'll just have a quick look through some of these. Um, you can tell that some of these are dead and some of these might be salvageable. So what I'm going to do is pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm just going to take the little plants out of the current pots that they're in, dump the stuff that's in the pots out, and then I'm going to put the small pumice in the little pots and we'll call it done. Um, the reason I'm doing this is styrofoam is not really holding on to enough humidity. Uh, it looks like there is possibly some sphagnum moss down in there. Again, it's just not holding on to the moisture long enough for um, my needs and how I grow with my full-time job. So again, a lot of these were in pretty dire straits when I got the flask. Um, I brought them, left them alone, put them in the grow room so they can kind of get used to uh, their environment now. It's been a month, so we're going to try to salvage these by getting them into pumice. We'll see what happens. So we'll start off with this one. This one's dead. There's no need to do anything with this one. That one's dead. Uh, this one here, it's got some green on it, but I'm going to guess that this one here is also just a goner. Pull some of that out. I think this one's going to be a goner, but we'll go ahead and pot it up uh, just to be give it the benefit of the doubt. If it dies, it dies. Uh, again, I don't really like um, planting with the styrofoam. It just doesn't work for me. And yeah, so we'll just rest that one there. Dump that out the rest of the way. Now, those are pretty big holes in the bottom of that pot, so 
I'm going to put a couple pieces of styrofoam down in the bottom of the pot, even though I don't like to do it, to try to mitigate some of the pumice from falling out through those holes, because I don't want all the pumice to fall out when I water it. That would kind of de defeat the purpose. Yeah, I don't have any more of the little tiny um, seedling pots that I usually use. Um, so this is just going to have to... Oh, you know what? Maybe those Lekka beads. And no, I'm not worrying about um, cleaning these off or anything like that. It's, you know, what's been in this pot the plant's used to. So, like I said, I'm just putting some Lekka beads down here to try to mitigate some of that um, pumice falling out. And I think, I think that should cover it right about there. I'll just bring the small pumice here, and that way if I make a mess, it goes into the pumice. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, we're using it as you're dropping it in instead of getting it all over the place. And yes, this is dry. Uh, I'm leaving it dry for a reason. This is pretty fine stuff. It's I don't think it's going to do much damage to whatever these roots have got going on with it because there's not much left to this plant. Alrighty, we've got that one done. Let's try to find one that looks a little bit more like it's got something to offer. This one here. So I was kind of surprised at the root system on that one, so... I'm hopeful for this one because, as you can see, there's new roots coming out of it and a new growth. So this one I'm really hopeful for. And again, I'm just going to use these little Lekka beads in the bottom. I like how small some of these little beads are. I don't use Lekka because I just don't really like the aesthetic. That's it. That's the only reason why. And I'm going to leave that one like that. Um, again, th these are pretty floppy. I think the roots, all of these roots that are down on these little seedlings are, are dead roots. I don't have a lot of hope for this flask. Um, but I'm mostly using those roots as a means to anchor the plant in the pot. So, so with this little one, I, I can use the um, name tag that I have to kind of help prop it up and stabilize it a bit. So... That's what we're going to do right here. Um, like I said, you can see how limp that is. I'm hopeful for this one because you can see the little tiny new root nubbins come in there. Yeah, hopeful for that one. Not so far the other one. Um, that's dead. That one's also dead. That's definitely dead. Okay, here's another possibility. You can see the um, new root nubbins here. So we're gonna pot this one up. And again, we're just going to rinse and repeat with putting the small Lekka balls at the bottom. I'm not going to be too upset if I get a little styrofoam ball here or there. That's okay for me, even though I, I really myself just don't like styrofoam as a growing medium. And again, I think oh, one or two might do it. A little one down there. I think that's all right. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this um, media to where the new roots coming out are sitting just a teeny tiny bit above that level. If that makes any sense. 
And this one also has a little tiny new growth coming on it too. Um, might try to use a piece of styrofoam to prop that up with. See if that'll do anything. It's another one that I'm going to call, yeah, I think that's pretty well dead. And same with that one. Now this one here looks like it might be all right. Ooh, that's got nothing for roots. All right, maybe that one won't be okay. I'm gonna try leaving it like that. See what's sad about this is this is the firmest feeling um, one that there is. So I think there's one one good root on this plant because uh, this is the least limp and floppy feeling seedling I've encountered from this uh, so far. All right, there you go, guys. So I think you get the general gist of what I'm going to do with the rest of these. Uh, again, some of them are very obviously dead, like that one. And some of them are possibly salvageable. So I'm just going to finish potting all these up. And then I'll be back on camera to show you what we have left. We'll say our goodbyes at that time. So I'll be back in a little bit after I've gotten all these potted up. You've seen basically what I'm going to do. Whichever ones are alive, I'm going to pour them out, um, leave a bottom dressing of the Lekka beads, and then pot them up in the small pumice. I'll be right back. All right, so there we have it. This is what I think might survive. Uh, they're all potted up now. So how am I going to water these? Well, it's pretty easy. I'm just going to pour some reverse osmosis water into the tray here. I'm going to fill it all the way, all the way up. And we're just going to let those soak for the next half an hour, 45 minutes. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Um, you can see that the pumice is already starting to soak up the moisture from the water. So we're just going to let these soak and we're going to hope for the best. I thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. A subscribe would be great. And everyone have a good day. Uh, we'll do a check in on these things in, I don't know, several months time to see how they're doing. Enjoy.